Coming up on today's Airborne, ANN presents its top flyers dozen sport aircraft. The NTSB releases a third update on the JAL battery fire, and the air show community mourns the loss of Fred Cabanas. These stories and more coming up today on Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. Well, now that the 2013 U.S. Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida has ended, it falls to ANN to announce our flyer's dozen of what we consider to be the best sport aircraft available from the industry at this time. The list of 13 airplanes is heavily weighted to the LSA segment, but it also includes a number of exceptional aircraft from the EAB segment, as well as ELSA and SLSA. And please know these birds are the real deal. It was not good enough for an airplane to simply be very good to make the list. They have to encompass the whole package. Good companies, good customer service, and great airframes. The list is presented alphabetically on our website at www.aero-news.net. And it includes the following aircraft. The BRM Aero Bristol, Cub Crafters Carbon Cub, FK Light Planes Comet FK-12 Biplane, Flight Designs CTLSI, the Kit Fox Light Sport, Lockwood Aviation's Air Cam, the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer, Progressive Aerodyne's Sea Ray, Rand's S7LS, Sonex 1X, Technam's P2008, the Vans RV-12, and Zenith's CH-650. This new list, of course, is just a preview of all the incredible data, insight, and analysis that will soon be presented in the third edition of the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Stay tuned to ANN and, of course, Airborne for more on this upcoming release. The National Transportation Safety Board has released a third update on its investigation into the January 7th fire aboard a Japan Airlines Boeing 787 at Logan International Airport in Boston. An examination of the flight recorder data from the JAL B787 airplane indicates that the APU battery did not exceed its designed voltage of 32 volts. The lithium-ion battery that powered the auxiliary power unit has been examined in the NTSB Materials Laboratory in Washington. The battery was x-rayed and CT scans were generated of the assembled battery. The investigative team has disassembled the APU battery into eight individual cells for detailed examination and documentation. Investigators have also examined several other components removed from the airplane, including wire bundles and battery management circuit boards. Today, the group will convene in Arizona to test and examine the battery charger and download non-volatile memory from the APU controller. Several other components have been sent for download or examination to Boeing's facility in Seattle and manufacturer facilities in Japan. Sadly, the air show industry has lost yet another veteran pilot. Stunt pilot Fred Cabanas was fatally injured in an accident in Cozumel, Mexico. A second person aboard the plane, Mexican Extreme Sports Program host Jorge Lopez, was also fatally injured in the accident, which reportedly happened Tuesday, January 15th, according to KeysNews.com. The accident was initially reported on the Spanish-language website Tierra Mexico. The director of Cozumel's Civil Protection Agency said that the two were engaged in filming a documentary to promote an air show when the accident occurred. Cabanas flew a variety of aircraft and air shows, ranging from classic biplanes to a bright yellow pit special. He used it to cut the ribbon to open the Navy's Key West Air Show in 2010. He was a native of the island city and paid for his flying lessons washing airplanes at Key West International Airport, beginning at the age of 16. According to his website, he had some 24,000 hours in his logbook.
Cabanas owned Cabanas Aeronautics Unlimited in Key West, offering sightseeing and aerobatic rides. He was reportedly not flying one of his own planes when the accident in Mexico occurred. Airbus delivered a company record of 588 aircraft to 89 customers and exceeded its order target of 650 by winning 914 gross orders. Airbus's backlog sets a new industry-wide record of 4,682 aircraft valued at over $638 billion. Deliveries were 10% higher than the 2011 record, and 2012 was the 11th year in a row of increased production. In single aisles, Airbus set a new record of 455 deliveries. Wide-body deliveries reached a record of 103 aircraft, underlying the success of the A330 family, which is being produced at the highest monthly production rates ever. Airbus recruited 5,000 employees in 2012, increasing the global employee figure to 59,000 and targets recruiting some 3,000 in 2013 to support all program developments. The company has increased its list prices moving into 2013. The average list prices of its aircraft is rising by 3.6%. The new pricing is effective from January 1st, 2013. You're watching Airborne. We'll be right back. No other aircraft explores the limits of the light sport category more than the Carbon Cub SS. It can land and take off in patches that you thought were accessible only to helicopters and hikers. And it does so with a grace, confidence, and control that are Cub hallmarks. If you thought that light sport was just for budget-minded beginners or for veteran pilots stymied by FAA medicals, you simply must fly a Carbon Cub SS. Check us out at www.cubcrafters.com. Pipistrel's innovative new Alpha Trainer has been designed from the ground up for flying school operations. Powered by a Rotax 80 horsepower engine, the Alpha burns only 2.5 U.S. gallons of fuel per hour at 100 to 108 knots, giving you the opportunity to make flight training cost-effective once again. Be sure to check out the Pipistrel Alpha when you're ready to select your next trainer. Get more info at pipistrel-usa.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop us an email to news spy at aero news.net. Bell Helicopter has delivered the 100th of a planned total of 349 H 1 helicopters during a ceremony at its Amarillo Assembly Center. The U.S. Marine Corps' H-1 helicopter program is comprised of both the UH-1Y utility helicopter and the AH-1Z attack helicopter. The UH-1Y utility helo can trace its roots back to the original Hueys, which were first deployed during the Vietnam War in 1963 as the UH-1E. Later, the E model was upgraded to a twin-engine N model. Likewise, today's AH-1Z can look back to its ancestor, the Cobra Attack Helicopter, that debuted in 1968 as the AH-1G model. Although the exterior look may have remained the same, each new model introduced new performance and capability upgrades, such as a new rotor system, gearboxes, and materials, and ultimately achieving the capable and lethal versions that the Marines fly today. Previous models achieved considerable international sales success, and the current models are beginning to attract foreign interest as well. The AH-1Z is in competition to supply 36 new attack helicopters to South Korea, with a decision to be made sometime this year. 
The Federal Communications Commission is reopening its rulemaking and is seeking additional comments on the proper timing and implementation of a phase-out of 121.5 MHz ELTs and transition to 406 MHz ELTs. The FCC considered this move earlier when the International COSPA SARSAT satellite system, which relays distress signals to search and rescue authorities, stopped monitoring frequency 121.5 megahertz on February 1, 2009. However, on January 10, 2011, the FCC formally stated its rule on the prohibition on the certification, manufacturer, importation, sale, or use of 121.5 ELTs because the FAA stated they could continue to provide beneficial means of locating missing aircraft, even without satellite monitoring because the frequency is still monitored by the search and rescue community, including the Civil Air Patrol. The FAA also expressed concerns about the cost and availability of replacements for the 121.5 MHz ELTs. The FCC continues to believe that a phase-out of 121.5 MHz ELTs is in the public interest. It seeks further comment on these tentative conclusions. It also seeks additional comments to help the industry more closely consider the timing and implementation of any such transition. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Are you ready for the next generation of light sport airplanes? Check out the all new Bristow. Fun, fast, and easy to fly. Learn more at www.bristow.com. Welcome back. It's Tuesday and time for our Aero Video of the Week. They say the electric plane is coming, and this week's video is proof of that. It features the electric Cree Cree four-engine electric prototype being developed by EADS. You'll find the three-minute video on YouTube by searching electric Cree Cree four-engine airplane. What better way to spend a Saturday morning than flying with a large formation of RV airplanes over South Florida? ANN's editor Tom Patton drew the lucky number at the Sebring Sport Aviation Expo. Tom, how was the flight?
Finally, today on Airborne, it's a new year and a fresh new look for American Airlines, as the company has unveiled a new logo and exterior for its planes, including the already delivered flagship Boeing 777-300ER aircraft, set to enter service on January 31st. In addition, American plans to continue taking delivery of new planes this year, as part of its historic orders for 550 new aircraft. The unveiling of the new logo and livery is the latest step forward in America's ongoing journey towards building a more modern travel experience for its customers. American is preparing to take delivery of hundreds of new, lighter aircraft, featuring composite materials that must be painted. Since the polished metal look was no longer an option, the importance of the paint selection became critical to honoring American's Silver Bird legacy. Silver mica paint was chosen as a way to maintain the silver heritage, which American's people and customers are passionate about, yet progress ahead with a clean new look. The new look features a bold red, white, and blue stripes on the tail cone and vertical stabilizer, along with a newly stylized eagle. Watch for new TV ads to begin showcasing the new look. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, January 22nd. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.